Hey everyone, during one of my playthroughs of Dark Souls, I had the random urge to put the shield into my right hand to see if I could use it as an actual weapon. And to my surprise, you can. At this moment, a thought popped into my head. Can you beat Dark Souls with shields only? So today, I'll be going over my run and how I went about doing this challenge run. But first, let's talk about some unique aspects of the shields being a weapon. Unlike other weapons, the shield is not actually considered a weapon in the game. So when trying to use magic weapon or any of the resins, they will not work. The same goes for magic shield. If your shield is in your right hand, magic shield will not work on it. So no buffs can be applied to the shield itself. So we'll have to utilize upgrading the shield into other elements to help with this run. Another aspect of the shield being used as a weapon is it cannot backstab or repose. So we'll have to simply rely on smacking our enemies to death. Now with that understanding how shields work, Let's get into the rules of this run. Rule number one, only shields can be used as weapons. Rule number two, all equipment is allowed, armored and rings and all. Number three, only buff items are spells, which in this case is only gonna be power within. Number four, level caps. This will be for each mandatory boss. The max level cap for this run will be 85. I do this to not be over level for the boss fights. Number five. Embers are locked behind bosses. I can only get large ember after Bell Gorgoyles and very large ember after Ornstein and Smo. I do this to prevent myself from having overpowered weapons early on in the run. Number six, no glitches or mods. Number seven, no summons. And lastly, beat the game. Optional bosses are just optional. The goal is to beat the game, not every boss. With that all said, let's get this run started. First, make sure to give your character a creative and unique name. For classes, I went with the Knight for the Tower Kite shield. It has the highest attack power of all the starting shield classes. For the gift, I went with the Master Key for the ease of access to the Darkroot Basin and Blight Town. With our character done, time to start our adventure. Once awakened in your cell, grab the key and start stripping. You always run faster when you're naked, and that's just scientific fact. Grab your shield and throw that bad boy on your right hand. Surprisingly, the overall damage isn't too bad. It's definitely better than the bare fist that I had to use on my fist only run. Once you're done bashing that hollow's head in, find Oscar, tell him to shut up and give you your Estus already. Once your Estus is acquired, time to take on the first boss, the Asylum Demon. Make your way to the boss door and run off the ledge doing a plunge attack. Hmm, that's right. I forgot to mention that shields don't get a critical strikes from plunge attacks either. They do get a slight boost in damage, but not much. I was lucky enough to get two hits off on the way down. The Asylum Demon is straightforward. You just want to stay behind him the whole time. The only attack that you need to look out for is his butt slam attack. Once you see him fly into the air, just run away. Once he's back down, just get behind him again. Start clapping some demon cheeks like a true hero would. And eventually he will succumb to a good time. Earning us our first Dark Souls badge. Once at Firelink Shrine, make sure to pick up some souls in the area. There will be four in total that you can grab. At this moment, I ended up using the souls to level up for a bit, but I think the better option would have been to save them to use for later to help with purchasing Tynite Shards. This would have helped upgrading my shield faster, since the damage output isn't that great on the enemies here. Once done at Firelink Shrine, make your way to Darkroot Basin. Along the way, make sure to pick up the souls on the ground for some easy levels. Be careful on the way down the Darkroot Basin. Havel will be waiting for you at the bottom, and he can kill you in one shot. I like to let him come up to me on the stairs and just run off. I found this to be the easiest way to get around him without getting hit. Also, right after you walk through the door, make sure to grab the large soul of the Nameless Soldier at the tree to your right. This will give you 1,000 souls. On your way to Darkroot Garden, make sure to grab the Grass Crest Shield. The Grass Crest Shield gives 10 points of stamina regain while equipped, which will be extremely useful for this run. After acquiring the Grass Crest Shield, make your way to the Undead Parish. Upon reaching the Undead Parish, watch out for the Tynite Demon. If he hits you with one of his melee attacks, it will kill you. Once at Undead Parish, we'll be farming Tynite Shards. We'll need 18 in total to get both of our shields to plus 5. The enemies that we'll be farming are Undead Soldiers and Boulder Knights. Undead Soldiers have a 1.6% chance of dropping a Tynite Shard, while Boulder Knights have an 8% chance of dropping one. You can also buy Tynite Shards from Andre for 800 souls, 
So if you save up all your souls from the beginning, unlike me, you can get a few upgrades in. While farming, grab the Firekeeper Soul to upgrade your flask to plus one back at Firelink Shrine. So during my time grinding, I experimented with a shield to find out how to properly use it as a viable weapon. I first tried to use two shields at once like you would a normal weapon, but found that the wide swing and low damage of the single hand attacks were not that great. Oftentimes in small areas, the wide swing would collide with the wall, leaving me open to attacks. This led me to two handing the shield. Overall, not bad with its light attacks, but the damage was still not that great. While two handing a shield, you can still block with it. So for a while, I would just block attacks and then punish with a light attack. This worked for the most parts, but fell apart when fighting multiple enemies. I eventually tried the heavy attack and the damage was better, but still felt a bit slow until a beautiful accident occurred. During a fight with an undead soldier, my heavy attack collided with its attack, and to my surprise, the shield blocked it and damaged the undead soldier. I wasn't too sure if this was an accident or not, so I tested it some more on the Balder Knights, and would you look at that, the heavy attack can block attacks and damage enemies at the same time. And at this moment, I realize I'm playing as Goofy from Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> I shit you not, I busted out laughing when seeing this. I honestly think this is fucking amazing. This silly little attack brought me so much joy while playing. With this newfound power unlocked, I finished up grinding and got my shield to plus 5. Now you might be asking, Akane, why didn't you pick up the Night Shield, which has a higher attack power than the Kite Shield? Well, because I forgot about it. If you haven't noticed, I don't make the smartest decisions. In the future of this video, I will grab it. Before taking on the boss, we have three more things to get done. Firstly, make sure to hit your level cap of 15. I personally dumped all my points into strength for as much damage as possible. Secondly, find and rescue Lotric. We are doing this to get an item off of him. Once rescued, head back to Firelink Shrine and push him off the cliff. Oh, I meant it. We literally need to get an item off his dead body. Load back into the game and grab his ring. His ring gives us 20% boost to health, stamina, and equipment load. Make sure not to take it off because it will break. We'll be using it through the entire run. Thirdly, grab the basement key. With these last three preparations done, we can take on the bell gargoyles. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I struggled hard on this boss fight. Not so much dealing with the first gargoyle, but having to deal with both of them at the same time. I thought with my power of block attacking, I would dominate this fight, but that was far from the truth. It worked really well in the first phase of the Bell Gargoyles. All of his attacks can be blocked by the shield's heavy attack, which made it easy getting him to half health. But when the second one came out, it all fell apart. I died seven times until I beat these bastards. The biggest issue that I ran into with this fight is how easy it was to miss with the heavy attack. A good chunk on the second phase, I would miss my attacks. The sad reality is that my block attack was easily defeated by their fire breath attack, and it broke me. After sitting on my failures, deep in thought, I finally realized what I was doing wrong. I was only focusing on the first Gorgol because that's what I always did on my other playthroughs. What I should be doing is focusing on the one that is breathing fire because you're pretty much guaranteed to hit them. You still can get hit when doing this, but I still went for it even if I saw the other one attacking me because I could just block it with the shield's heavy attack. Now if the other one does its fire breath at you, then don't go for it. It's not worth the damage you will take. So with this new idea in mind, I went back in and lord and behold, it worked. I was able to take out the second gargoyle pretty quickly using this new tactic, which only left me with one left, and as stated before, he's easy to 1v1. Using the shield's heavy attack, he goes down, earning us our second Dark Souls back. With the gargoyles out the way, it's time to work our way to Blight Town. But first, let's take care of a few things. Grab the resident key from the undead merchant and make your way down to the lower bird. The dogs aren't too bad here, just wait for them to attack block it, and punish them. Makes the most annoying enemy in the game child's play. Rescue Griggs, we'll be needing some items off of him. Head back to Firelink Shrine and talk to Griggs. And talk to Griggs. Huh. Oh, it's because I'm stupid. I see. You need a 10 in intelligence for him to sell you stuff. Currently I have a 9. Put a quick point into intelligence and we are good to go. The item we want is the Lingering Dragon Crest Ring. It costs 20,000 souls, so it'll be a minute before we can buy it. Next step is getting the keys to the depths, and to do that, we need to take on the Capricorn. 
The Capra Demon wasn't too bad of a fight. You just want to run up the stairs and take out the dogs one by one. Once they're out of the way, it's just a slow repeat of doing the shield's block attack against the Capra's swing attack. The only attack you want to actually dodge is his slam attack. If you try to use the block attack on it, this will just zap your stamina and deal damage to you instead of blocking it. Unfortunately, due to the shield not being able to properly plunge attack, you cannot cheese him. Just take your time with using your heavy attacks against him and he will eventually go down, earning us the Depths Key. With the Depths Key in hand, enter the Depths. Get the Large Ember and rescue Laurentius. Don't ask about my sack. You can admire it, I just don't like to talk about it. While in the Depths, farm on rats for humanity. We'll be needing a total of 10. The reason we are farming humanity is to help increase our chances of getting Kirk's Spike Shield. It has only a 33% chance of dropping. The special thing about the spike shield is that it does bleed damage, which would be great against Quaylag since she has pretty low resistance to bleed damage. Once you are ready, make sure you are human and hunt down Kirk. Kirk is further in the depths to the left hallway of the door to Blight Town. Once he appears, kill him and hope you get lucky. In my case, the bastard didn't drop him. Oh well, I'm used to doing things the hard way. Or am I used to taking it the hard way? Now, there are a few more things that we need to get down here. I ended up messing up in my run and went back up top and had to come back later. But for the sake of efficiency, I'll tell you what you need to do down here. We need to get a large Tynite shard off a dead body. It's the one by the army of giant rats in the Chandler. Once you have that, head back up where you encounter the first butcher, and behind where he was is a hole. Go down the hole and find the spider shield. The spider shield has a full resistant to poison and toxic, and will help out in Blight Town. With that done, head back up top. You should have around 20,000 souls by this point to buy the Lingering Dragon Crest Ring. Buy the ring and immediately kill Griggs. Again, I meant it literally. We need something off of him. Once dead, he will drop the Slumbering Dragon Crest Ring, which will help with getting around areas without alerting enemies. At this point in time, I finally got the Night Shield. About damn time. I also stopped by Andre to pick up the Weaponsmith Box and Repair Box, so I don't have to come back here to finish upgrading. Last thing we need to do before heading down is to talk to Laurentius and get the Pyromancy Flame from him so we can use Power Within. With that all out the way, we can head to Blight Town. When making your way down, you can try and get the Firekeeper Soul in this area. Even with the Spider Shield, it was a massive pain to deal with. I died multiple times. But after that small hell, I got the Firekeeper Soul and upgraded my flask to plus two. Before taking on Quaylife, we have some grinding to do. We'll be killing giant leeches. Giant leeches have a 5.15% chance to drop large Tynite shards and a 2.06% chance to drop green Tynite shards. We will need 8 Tynite shards to upgrade our shield to plus 10, and we'll need about 10 green Tynite shards for later. If you have any luck like me, the green Tynite shards will drop more often for you than the large for some annoying reason. Whenever you're done grinding, go up Blight Town and grab the Power Within to help with the next boss fight. Get our shield to plus 10. I personally only did this to the Night Shield. I was being a bit lazy and just left the Grass Crest Shield at plus 6. Once you have everything, make sure to hit level cap of 35. I put 3 points into Health, 2 points into Endurance, and the rest into Strength. Make your way to Quaylag. Along the way, Maneater decided to show up. I was just going to ignore her, but I found that she can't enter Quaylag's domain which I found to be a bit hysterical, so for fun, I decided to be a woman eater and show her how to properly eat someone. Wink, wink. Speaking of eating someone, hello, Quaylag. So for this fight, you just want to hug the right or left side of her and be on the lookout for her AoE attack. It's by far her most damaging move. I also made the mistake on my first attempt of allowing her to pin me against her in the lava, which in most cases I would be all for being pinned down. But when you're surrounded by magma and she does her AoE attack, good chance it's going to kill you like it did me. Second round had no issues with her, just be mindful of your health due to power within. Don't want to have half health and she gets lucky and hits you. With that said, smack those damn spider cheeks as hard as guts would and earn ourselves our third Dark Souls badge. With that done, ring the bell and join Quaylag's little sister's harem. Offer her the little bit of humanity you have left, we'll be doing this for a shortcut later on. Head back up to Sin's Fortress to get the Covetous Gold Serpent Ring, it will help out with grinding for items. After we have the ring, make your way down to the Catacombs, all the way to Vemos. Here we will turn our Night Shield into a Fire Night Shield, this is going to help us farm Bone Whale Skeletons. 
You might be asking, why would we want to hunt the only enemy in the game that is worse than the dogs? Well, they have a 2% chance to drop the Bone Wheel Shield. To me personally, it is the best offensive shield in the game. When it's equipped, its heavy attack does 3 consecutive hits in a row and has one of the highest damage outputs for shields when upgraded to Fire or Lightning. Let's just take a quick minute to discuss why you would want to go down the Lightning and Fire Path upgrades. We know already with the shields we cannot apply resin which would give us these element buffs. You might say that's no biggie, why not just stick with the normal upgrade path of plus 15 which would give our bone wheel shield an AR of 200 with a descaling with strength. Well let's say for fun we hit the soft cap for strength which is 40 to compare the damage output between the three. Starting with the bone shield at plus 15 that gives us an AR total of 257. For the lightning path at plus 5, the total is 444, and for the fire path at plus 10 is 448. So you can see the damage output is almost doubled even with the element paths losing the strength scaling. I personally had no clue how good the element upgrade paths could be for certain weapons. I just learned this as well and I wanted to share that information with y'all. With that all said, time to get the bone wheel shield. So the way I went about grinding for it was to go out and taunt the three closest bone wheel skeletons and lead them back to the bonfire. You can usually get lucky with the AI and only have one come in at a time, but even if all three come in, it's not too bad. Don't worry about Vamos, he's no stranger from taking it from behind. So make sure to have the serpent ring on and pray the shield drops for you, because it sure hell took a good minute before it dropped for me. I'm not joking, it took me 34 minutes until it finally dropped. The damn green Tynite shards only have a 0.06% chance more than the bone wheel, and within the first 15 minutes of grinding for them, they dropped twice. I didn't even have the serpent ring on at the time. Some bullshit RNG. Once you finally have the shield, we can make our way out. Upgrade the shield as much as you can, I got mine to plus 6. Hit our next level cap of 45, I put 3 more points into vitality, a single point into endurance, and the rest into strength. Take out the giant up top to make your way to the iron golem. The iron golem is a pushover, just use the heavy attack from the bone wheel and a couple of hits he will fall over. Rinse and repeat and we will earn our fourth dark souls badge. Before heading to an Orlando, stop by the moonlight butterfly and collect her soul. We will be needing it for a boss shield in an Orlando. Just wait until she finally decides to land and use your new beyblade attack on her to win. I completely forgot about Pinwheel when I was in the catacombs, so I made my way back down there and remembered why I forgot about him. Once you have the Rite of Kindling, we can head to An Orlando. Make your way into the castle. I would advise beforehand getting the Demon Tynite Shard in the chest outside of the castle. I ended up forgetting about them until after Ornstein and Smo. We'll be needing them for some shield upgrades. Once inside, you can start grinding Silver Knights for 1000 souls, or make your way to the Giant Blacksmith to start upgrading our shields. At the giant blacksmith, we can take one of our old shields, upgrade it to level 10, and turn it into the crystal ring shield using the moonlight butterfly soul. The unique thing about this shield is its heavy attack is a magic range attack, but at the cost of its durability. It does okay damage, sadly back in the day the shield used to base its damage on your right hand weapon, but FromSoft decided it was too broken and patched it. So now it just has a base magic damage. To upgrade this shield, we will need a total of 10 Demon Tynite Shards. Luckily in An Orlando, we can get a total of 7. The other 3 you can get from Tynite Demons at Undead Parish and Sin's Fortress. Overall, the shield will not be our main source of damage, but will be a useful tool if we need to attack from afar. At this point, I also pick up the Silver Knight Armor Set, solely because you get to have a cape, and every hero needs a cape. Hit our next level cap of 60, at this point we'll be dumping all of our points into endurance to help with the bone wheel spin attack. We won't have to worry about strength after Ornstein and Smo because we'll be making a bone shield into a lightning shield which will no longer scale with strength. Once that's done, time to take on the boss. Ornstein and Smo went better than I expected. I only ended up dying 3 times to them and to me that's a pretty big win. The strategy I used was to get Smo stuck on a pillar while I drilled into Ornstein. The heavy attack from the bone wheel does pretty decent damage, plus has a good chance to stagger Ornstein and get more hits on him. Try to kill him before Power Within runs out, because after that, the shield doesn't do that great of damage. With Ornstein down, that leaves Smo with his new lightning powers. I just use the same old cheese attack of getting Smo behind a pillar and smacking him with some Destructo Disc. 
I will note if the disc hits his hammer, he will not take any damage from it. So be mindful of that because we don't want our shield to break on us. After a few hits to the face, Mo goes down, earning us our fifth Dark Souls back. Grab the Lord Vessel from Guinevere and listen to her words of praise. Succeed Lord Queen and inherit the fire of our world. Thou shalt end it to become a king and a great servant in the Then get mad that you've just been catfished and throw a destructo disc at those fake titties. We deserve real titties. Back outside the castle, the Dark Moon Knightess isn't too happy that we killed her giant titty goddess, so take her out and earn us another Firekeeper soul. Before leaving, make sure to turn the Bone Wield Shield into a Lightning Shield. Back at Firelink Shrine, put the Lord Vessel back so we can take on the worst area in the game. And deep down, you know I'm speaking the truth. Before taking on Sif and the Four Kings, we need to upgrade our Bone Shield to plus 5. To do that, we will need Tynite Chunks and a Tynite Slab. Make your way to the Undead Asylum and take out the two Black Knights. Even with just a base lightning shield, they will go down quickly. We will need the red Tynite Chunks for later. Once they are taken care of, take on the Stray Demon. The Stray Demon is the same as the Asylum Demon, just hang out behind his behind and it won't take long to die. But I decided to try out the Crystal Ring Shield against him and that wasn't the smartest move. He will just spam his AoE attack so I advise you not to try it. But with the stray demon dealt with, grab the Tynite Slab and get out of there. Head to New Londo Ruins to farm Dark Rates. Dark Rates have an 8% chance to drop Tynite Chunks. With the Lightning Bone Shield, they're pretty easy to kill. With the 8% drop rate in the Serpent Ring, it won't take you long to get the amount you need. After you have enough Tynite Chunks to get your shield to plus 4, head back to Firelink and upgrade your Bone Shield to plus 5, hit our next level cap of 65, once again all points into Endurance, with that finished, time to take on Sif. Stop by Andre and buy the Crest of Atorius. Then make your way to Sif through Darkroot Gardens. Try to convince her that y'all can be best friends and sadly fail. Kill the poor girl and god, that's just a hard line to say. Kill the poor girl. Uh, that's just not fun. After dealing with that uncomfortable situation, grab the Covenant of Atorius and head to New Londo Ruins to take on the Four Kings. While I was making my way to the Four Kings, I decided to explore a bit and never realized there was a Firekeeper soul right here. I've beaten this game five times and I had no clue this was here. Well, better late than never, I guess. After learning what I was missing out on, I made it to the boss room. Now the thing that sucks about the Covenant of Atorus is that you cannot use power within when it is equipped for some weird reason. And I completely forgot about that. What I should have done was before the fight was cast power within and then put on the ring. I do not know why, but this does work. Sadly, I forgot to do this. Instead of bailing, I decided to just take the four kings head on. My strategy was simple, just run in and face tank everything while trying to spin to win. It definitely got scary at times. At one point, I was pretty sure three kings would be out because my DPS was so low, but I got lucky and was able to take the pounding to the face and come out on top, earning us the sixth Dark Souls badge. With the kings defeated, time to make our way to Seath. Head to An Orlando, sprint through the library, find Seath and let him kill you. I would advise having the Ring of Sacrifice to not lose any souls, break out of jail, and have Seath's harem of tentacle monsters come after you. Huh, since this is a Japanese game, this does make sense that this would be censored. After that happy ending, get the key and bust out of there. A quick side note, I just wanted to show y'all that the Crystal Ring Shield is still being used and loved. Open the secret door and hit our next level cap of 70. I think y'all already know where the points are going. With all that done, time to take on Seath the Scaleless. So I made the mistake of leading the giant clans into the boss fight in hopes that Seath would kill them quickly, which he failed to do. Having to deal with the clans and Seath, I ended up causing my own death on the first go, but luckily the second attempt was better. I waited for Seath to get as close as possible before breaking his crystal. After that, I just bum rushed him and spammed R2, ran around his tail to avoid his beam attack and get some hits on his side. I got pretty lucky that he didn't do his tail attack, so I was able to get some more hits in, but got unlucky that he did his AoE attack. Fortunately, I didn't get cursed and was able to kill him right after. Surprisingly, this fight went quick, but with that said, we earned ourselves our 7th Dark Souls back. With Seath dead, time to head to Nito, run through the Tomb of Giants. Hit our next level cap of 75. Can you guess which stat the points are going into? 
After finishing leveling, run straight off the cliff. I have no clue why I just did that. Moving on. At this point, I decided to hunt down Leroy to get the Sanctus Shield, thinking it would be cool to use a shield that has a divine aesthetic. I kill Leroy with no issues and acquire the shield. Made my way to Andre to make it an actual divine shield, and then realize I need 18 faith to use it. There are not enough levels within the level cap to get my faith to 18. I shrugged it off thinking the damage would still be enough with power within to kill Nito's skeletons. With my perfect plan in hand, I made my way to Gravelord and Nito. I dropped down, taking the BS fall damage, and went straight for the skeletons. I fucked up. I fucked up really hard. I honestly did not expect it to only do 25 damage. After that, I panicked and just switched straight to the Bone Wheel Shield. My new plan was now to just rush Nito and just kill him as fast as possible. I made sure to keep an eye out for the skeleton so they don't gang up on me, but I got pretty lucky that Nito did a pretty good job of taking them out for me. The only attack that was a bit scary was Nito's AoE attack. You can block it, but just make sure you have as much stamina as possible for it not to break through and damage you. Just keep pressure on him while taking a few farts to the face and we will earn ourselves our 8th Dark Souls badge. Now time for everybody's favorite boss, Bed of Chaos. Make your way to Quailana and offer her 30 humanity to get Covenant rank 2. With this, we can go straight to the Bed of Chaos, but first we need to deal with Ceaseless Discharge. Ceaseless Discharge is very straightforward. Grab the robes, avoid his Discharge, wink wink. Run back to the entrance and insta kill him in a few hits. Gotta love gimmick bosses. With that done, make your way down to the Demon Ruins and get the Large Flame Ember. We'll be needing it for later. Go like you're going to take on the copied and paste stray demon, but take a hard right. Down this way, because of our covenant rank, the door will open and we'll be able to go to the bed of chaos without dealing with the other bosses. After running past everything, time for the most well-crafted fight in the game. And for my own safety, I am being sarcastic. To be honest, I don't know what to say here. You literally run to your left, hit some sticks, run to your right, hit some more sticks, but this time try not to fall in a hole while avoiding giant branch arms then potentially die to one of her fire attacks if you didn't fall in one of the holes, run back, make a stupid jump that is very easy to fuck up, and hope you make it to her insect fetus face and smack it with all your might like you would to an actual fetus. Again, for my own safety, that is a joke. Wink wink. With the fetus dead, we earn ourselves the ninth Dark Souls bag. With that shit show over with, time to take on Gwen. Before taking them on, we have one last thing to do. We need to take our bone lightning shield and turn it into a fire shield. Gwen has a very high resistance to lightning and I'm not ready for that type of challenge run. With the door open for the kiln of the first flame, we can farm the second black knight in this area, the one with the great sword to get the red tinite chunks. No need to worry about drop rates, after every kill you will get one. Once you have enough to get the bone shield to plus 9, head back over to Lost Isolith and drop down to the poison area to grab yourself a red Tynite slab. In hindsight, I should have done this when I was there, but oh well. With that done, we have a plus 10 fire weapon to take on Gwen. The level cap for Gwen is 85, but I was still feeling confident so I stayed at 76. I don't recommend taking this risk like I did. Walk up the stairs to the boss store, pop your buffs, and prepare for a wild ride. I will let the fight play out and commentate on it afterwards. Enjoy.
Okay, when Gwen uppercutted me with this sword, my butthole was so tight, even if I dropped a bar of soap in prison, I would be safe. With that aside, I thought I could just do the parry tactic and I would be able to stun him, and it seemed to work until I started fucking up. I knew I wouldn't be able to punish him like normal, and that the easiest time to heal would be to parry him, then heal. But as the fight kept going, the more scared I got, and the more I started to hesitate. I even had to start using these stalagmites to give me a chance to heal. I had a couple of opportunities to kill him, but I hesitated, which almost caused me to die. But with Lady Luck on my side, I was able to somehow pull through and beat him, earning us our 10th and final dark turn. Man, this run was a wild ride. It was super fun having to think outside of the box for this one, having to figure out how to use the shield properly, to even having to use the element paths for it to take on the last few bosses. I personally never used any of the upgrade paths before, I just always stuck with the normal path because I could never see the benefit of doing the element paths. But I finally see why FromSoft developed it this way. It was really cool of them to actually put shields in the game that could be used to beat it. It just shows that they knew someone would be crazy enough, me, to beat the game with it. With that all said, I want to thank y'all for watching. I really do appreciate it. Until next time, take care. Our world returns.